welcome to 2022. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I have some very interesting 22 rifles, which is kind of suitable, and we'll get into them in a minute. Actually, I went in the 22 vault, which I haven't done since the beginning of the channel. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but I'll, I'll show you a whole bunch of very interesting rifles over the coming videos. Uh, but before I get into that, I hope you all had a nice Christmas. Those of you that celebrate or a nice holiday season, people are always saying, get on the subject. So the subject is 22s. And I guess it's fair to say we probably shoot 22s more than just about anything else. Um, I can't remember the production numbers, but I knew a fellow that worked, I think, for CCI. And the numbers of 22 shells that are used every day is phenomenal. I never touched, but talked about Remington 22s much. Uh, but we'll start with this model. You may recognize it. It's the Score Master. It's just about impossible uh, for us with the equipment we have in our very humble studio to film these markings for you. But the Score Master, some of you may recognize, a very popular, very accurate 22. Uh, the nice thing about a lot of these vintage 22s is they take 22 short, long, or long rifle. They have a quite decent inline steel magazine that's easy to remove and replace the triggers are good uh, the values by the way a lot of people are writing me and saying that i get the prices wrong the prices are always higher when they go on a site like guns america and try to buy one of these used rifles or shotguns that i talk about and i guess um it's fair to say that trend will continue i think we're in a period of inflation it's not so much that the um the items, you know, whether it's a used rifle or a used car, is going up, but the value relative to the buying power of the dollar is what makes it seem. So yeah, these used to be, I don't know, a hundred bucks, maybe something like that. It's, I lose track because I buy over time. And um, it, it's hard to find things like for three, four hundred dollars. And like I said, I think that trend will continue. The, uh, the dollars don't increase in value they go down the material things they seem to go up so yeah rifles historically have been some of the best investments uh, even exceeding a lot of, of stocks in the stock market anyway enough on that so remington score master uh definitely worth picking up i'll flip it around so you can see uh, that you know it's the architecture is basic classic rifle is there any polymer on here at all uh, no, and this one, I probably bought it because it was all original. Nobody put a recoil pad. Nobody even put sling swivels on this particular rifle. And, you know, I mean, I don't know what these would change hands for. Now with the aperture sight and in this condition, it, it's probably a $400 gun. I'm just guessing. Don't quote me. But uh, def definitely worth mentioning to you. And if you can find one. Uh, that's great. I should give you the model number. There, there are many model numbers, and I always invite um, you know viewers to to do their own due diligence. It's fun research. This one is called the model uh, five. I just looked before five eleven P, but there there are many, and they change them over the years. And I don't know. You know, sometimes people say, well, mine says Sears on it, or mine says uh, you know some other company. Of course how rifles were and shotguns were sold and branded is a different story but i'm always after the action and the performance and in a way the collector value value came with a very nice front sight which is actually worth pointing out just because as you know a lot of rifles these days uh, they don't come with with sight so we look at the remington and that's uh that's just a beautiful rifle to own Here's one you may never have seen. So this is made in Argentina, and uh, a lot of people, you know, tell me that they they don't make firearms in Argentina. Well, they do, and actually, this is an ex excellent 22. I'll I'll flip it around, and some of you uh, may recognize some of the features, and you know, it it could include some features of a Stevens. I'll show you that in a second. You see this um, 
this hole here, uh, it, it doesn't look like it means much, but it actually means a lot because this is a semi-auto and even this one, of course I bought it used, came with this massive magazine, which is, you know, if you're having a busy day at the gravel pit or whatever, thank you, it's nice to have a high capacity magazine. Anyhow, um, yeah, so it's a semi-automatic, but when you push the bolt, it also turns into a single shot. So I don't know if we can focus in on that movement of the bolt. So all I'm doing on my side is I'm pushing the operating handle toward you, toward the camera. And once I've done that, uh, the action is locked. Other than that, it's a very simple blowback. And if you're wondering what model number, it's the Mahaley Model 1111. Uh, cleaning couldn't be simpler. This unthreads and you can take the whole magazine. Um, I'm sorry, the whole um, action spraying and the bolt, everything comes apart. Comes with uh, M14 style. Naturally, I've gone through all of these a half dozen times before filming. Um, M14 style front sight. Uh, the rear sight is a polymer, but it doesn't really matter. It hits everything that you aim at. And the wood is, uh, again, you may have watched one of my prior videos and some of these rifles from, uh, you know, places outside of North America or Europe have very unique wood. And this is one of those jungle woods. I'm sorry, I don't know the name. This is one tough wood though. It is hard. It, you, you can't, um, gee, you can't touch it with your fingernails. It's, it's a strong, very strong stock and I don't think it's brittle at all. Excellent little rifle. A Mahaley, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's M A H E L Y, model 1111, and it says uh, Carabina automatic caliber 22 long rifle, and it's Argentina. So, anyway, that, that's one you don't see. And people always ask me values. I mean, this one's flat new. What would I pay? Well, probably it looks like a $300 gun to me, anyhow. Uh, we'll set that one down. Um, the next one, first have to show you a Mauser 98 to understand. So this is, uh, what is this? This is a Zauer Mauser 98, 1938. Somebody's done some work. You can see the bolt handles different aperture sight. Uh, it's got a typical Mauser stock that's been shortened. I'm just rotating it because uh, you know, if you ever start one of these channels, you'll see not everybody's seen everything at the same time. Somebody might be seeing this for the first time. So this is a typical World War II Mauser 98, but it's been sporterized or targetized. And uh, well, a lot of people ask me what this, you know, the younger viewers, what is this cutout for? So that's a thumb cutout. And, um, you know, it, speed of fire or rate of fire is important in combat. And of course, uh, I saw rifles with removable magazines from, you know, well before the First World War. But a removable magazine uh, has to be secured. If it falls out, then the infantry, the soldiers left with nothing to reload with. So they use stripper clips. And this ties in with what's called the thumb cut here. This is a stripper clip. And I'll just set it down here somewhere. See that light is giving us a little bit of a show. So what you do is you push the stripper clip down. You'll have to rearrange the direction in your minds. And these cartridges um, are forced into the magazine well. And the holder, the stripper clip, uh, just falls away. So you, you would carry many of those. You can reload very quickly and you're never disabled the rifle so long as you have stripper cliffs um, you're able to go uh, re with removable magazine it's great so long as you have enough magazines and people do plan on losing their magazines because most of the time people have a rifle a new sporter with a removable mag and the first thing they're asking for is another magazine but um, anyway i showed you this only because you would think after looking at this and it has the feature that the follower has to be depressed to close the bolt you would think that this is also a mauser 98 and it actually 
in a way is, except it's one of my favorite 22s. If you can find one of these, uh, my advice is to buy them on the spot. They're, they're just fantastic. This one is based on an FN action. I'll swing it around. So this is a full size Mauser 98. You can see the thumb cut. You can see the large receiver ring. This one is especially good. It has the winter trigger guard. Um, you can rewind and look at the trigger guard on the one I just showed you. It's a lot smaller. This is to accommodate gloves for winter war. In a way, the stock is better because on this one, because it has the cupped butt plate, um, it's just a feature that a lot of collectors like. And now you can watch the magazine, sorry, the action work. So what they've done is they've modified the way the bolt works. So you just feed a 22 round onto that ramp. And then you have, um, in this particular rifle's case, uh, f like it's, it's target grade accuracy is just wonderful. Now this, this one particular model was modified in Israel and it's an FN and somewhere on here it's a, it, you know, it says what year. Again, it's hard to see and it's hard to film, but it's Fabrique Nationale Arms de Guerre. If so, um, it's, it's a typical made in Belgium, Mauser, and then modified. And some of the Israeli 22 trainers, you know, have seen a lot of use. Um, I was very lucky with this one, and I don't think it was used very much at all. And it has the stock that also has been sporterized. So another 22 that constantly goes up in value because none of these ones that I've shown you, I, I don't know whether they're still the, making the Mahili, but they're not producing anymore, and there are more and more, well, as far as I know, there are more and more shooters and um, collectors and people interested. So the value keeps going up, but it's a simple function of demand. Uh, anyway, we don't want to make this too long a video, but uh, I'll, I'll go on to the last gun anyway, and then so see what you think about this. Um, if you find one of these, it's pretty amazing. You know, when I when somebody calls me about something like this, I'm immediately interested. Just look at the care that somebody took. I mean, I I I wouldn't have the time or the know-how to make a case like this. I don't know how many screws are on this, and it was all to protect. Oh, somehow it got closed. To protect a another Remington 22 target rifle. And I think what we'll do is probably um, take this out for you. You can see whoever owned this uh, really cared about this model. And I'm going to read you the model number. It's the Junior Special. So it's very similar to the score master that I just showed you. And it came with everything that you see here. I mean, the gentleman or lady that did this work put the velvet lining. You can see it came with the, the Lyman uh, sights. And I put them on a piece of paper here that you, so you can see. Now, you know, it has that scope on that you just saw, but it also has the aperture sight. And, if you see those inserts there that I laid out on the white white paper, they frame the bullseye. If you're a target shooter, you'll know all about this. Of course, the aperture sight in the back had to be removed to make room for the scope. It's very cluttered around here, but um, that's the rifle. And it has not a bench rest, you know, heavy bench rest style stock to it, but it's a very comfortable stock. The, the scope is, is long and I guess I guess they must have put a couple of holes in the barrel although sometimes they're just epoxied on but this is probably anchored so you'll you'll notice it's very similar to that score master junior the junior special trademark model 521t again exceptionally accurate no sign of any polymer and people will ask what the scope is it's a weaver looks like a one two a v22 i can't read the other numbers um i'll probably remove the scope if i decided to shoot this um and use the the aperture sights which is 
my preference most of the time for target shooting. And I don't know if we can film inside the front sight. And I, I'm a little bit off the, the camera, but um, you'll see it's orange. And there are all kinds of inserts. We probably didn't capture that. And sorry, our equipment is pretty dated, but um, yeah, again, if you find one that somebody's put this much work into, and it came with other accessories as well, I think they they even included a target, which was kind of neat. Um, whenever I see a target, I always remember a video I made on the um, on the Fortner, the straight pull and shoots, and I thought it was very accurate, and and it is very accurate. But uh, target shooters said, uh, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. It's the blind leading the blind, and that's probably quite true because I. I'm not a target shooter, I, I actually don't even know any of the rules, but when bullets are falling fairly close to one another, like in this target, you can see it's even dated, and I don't know whether this came out of an estate or you know what the situation was, but for me, depending on the range, and I'm assuming that's probably at 50 yards, um, that's a pretty good accuracy. And with the scope and case and, and all, it's just a very desirable 22 to own and most of the time I have trouble selling these just because it, it's all done with such care. Uh, can you imagine how, all the measurements alone? Anyhow, that's just the start of our um, 22 videos. I hope you find that interesting. And um, we'll probably adjourn here between now and the next video. Stay healthy uh, uh, and take care. I want to get into the mountains to film. Uh, unfortunately, the highways in, in the area where I live were destroyed. They're, they're getting them back to working, but only for commercial and necessary vehicles. So hopefully we'll get out there. And if you hear a noise in the background, it's because we have some gale force winds happening outside. But life remains good and take care. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye.